Hi, welcome to Taya Talk. I am David Strickle, creator of the Taya Mindset Practice. And I want to talk today about polarity, my um, favorite topic, <laughs> one of my favorite topics, and how polarity creates division in our world. And really what polarity is doing is it's it's moving our vibration up and down a virtual vibrational spiral. So as we move through life or our day, our year, whatever period you want to measure, we are never static. We are moving up and down vibrationally all the time. Certainly there are times that we move up and down more in a more pronounced way. We go higher to higher highs and lower lows and we achieve the higher highs and lower lows via our mindset. So polarity is only doing a little bit of this movement for us. It's just sort of a, it's steady, but it's sort of an up and down, um, you know, steady flow. And our mindset is the thing that's going to impact that and make it more pronounced. So when we have a mindset that tends toward the negative, when we have a lot of transgressors that create triggers for us, it's easier for us that little dip that polarity creates naturally it's easier for that to become something that takes us much further down our spiral. That's when we're getting triggered. <clears throat> and when we're going higher, usually that, that is mindset as well, because it's, it's about clearing all of the things that drag us down and we naturally go a little bit higher, but we can, with our thought, take ourselves even higher than that. We can bliss ourselves out. We can be so source connected that we love everything and everyone, and we are fearing nothing, we're judging nothing, and we're up in that wonderful, blissful space. And we all know that that exists innately. This is why we all dream about a utopian environment where everything is perfect, no one wants for anything, everyone gets along, everyone agrees, and we're just living in this perfect harmony because that's how we exist eternally. That is our, our energetic being is that. The energetic realm is that. The separation from that or the detuning of that super high vibration of source is the human experience, is the physical experience. Polarity is designed to drag us down out of that and take us into a lower vibration where we're operating more in our physical mindset, which we would call our ego as a human being. And in that ego consciousness, we are having more challenges. We are separating ourselves from source because source is all creation, all positive, all the things that we want to experience are all derivatives of source. So in order for us to expand our consciousness as beings, we need some separation from source and we are expressions of source. So source essentially has created a system where it projects itself into physical environments, creates physical environments to project into for the separation experience. Because this perceived separation, which is just our perception, we're never really separated from source, but in this perceived separation, we discern preferences. We discern preferences for things that, yes, we want to experience this, the things that we like and, and want to experience are all expressions of source. We naturally want those. But we're also creating a, a, an experience of things that we do not prefer, our challenges. And the physical experience absolutely is about challenges. The physical experience is designed to self-destruct. The, the earth environment and everything in the earth environment is here for a period, is here for an experience. In the energetic realm, we speak in terms of experiences instead of in terms of linear time. But when we're in physical, we absolutely are perceiving the experience in linear time. Only that linear time experience provides us the opportunity to discern a preference for something that we want and, and experience it and manifest it, or to experience something that we don't want and move through that experience. Even if that experience ends our physical journey, it's still an experience. So life and death and suffering, all of these things that we tend to fear uh, as human beings, all of these things are, are just an opinion that we've created for ourselves because they're not our preferences. And we've come up with this notion that the things that are not our preferences just shouldn't be. They shouldn't exist. No one should be facing challenges. No one should be going through illness. No one should be 
um, involved in a war. No one should be involved in starvation, genocide, all of these things that we see going on in our world all the time. But that's a human created mindset. That's an opinion created from our ego. And I completely understand that. I, I have absolutely held that opinion throughout my lifetime. I have detuned that largely in my practice, but it's still not my preference. My preference would be for no one to ever experience any of those things. But I also know that even though that's my preference, that those things are. Those things are occurring in our world. They are shown to us every day. And the key to solving anything is never in the harsh judgment of it, never in that should not be energy. In fact, all evidence points toward the should not be labeling of things in our lives and across humanity, prolong it, keep it alive. We are giving it life with our attention, our focus. Our collective focus as should not be, this war shouldn't be happening, that genocide should not be occurring, starvation should not exist, that is actually the thing that keeps it going energetically. And everything that is physical is an expression of the energetic realm. So we are collectively creating when we judge anything it should not be. Now, we tend to go to the outer limits of the worst things in our world when we think about uh, trying this practice. The way to do this is to start with your, your own things, your own transgressors. The things that happen in your life, the things that you've done and experienced, that you label and continue to label should not be. When you start detuning those things, then you start to awaken. Then you start to raise your default vibration to a higher level. And when your default vibration is operating at a higher level, you gain clarity. Not only are you living in a more joyous state of being without the need for anything to change, because all of this stuff that the matrix tells us we're supposed to want, the new cars and the handbags and the great trips and the perfect bodies and all of that stuff, all of that stuff is fine, but we are told that that's what joy is. And we collectively have really stopped believing that joy is possible outside of consumerism or outside of you know the perfect physical projection or outside of the perfect relationship. But that stuff sells. That, that really creates co- a lot of commerce in the matrix. So that's why we've created that that way. But now we're waking up and we're coming to see that, okay, I, you know, I have the stuff or I achieved the perfect body or I thought I found the perfect partner. And that experience had sort of a peak, but then after the peak, I started to see the flaws in these things, or some of the old conditions came back, or some of the new manifestations just went away. Why is that? Well, it's because of the vibrational landscape, because of this up and down that we are traveling all the time. Taya, nor any other practice, is going to solve polarity, because polarity creates the universe. Polarity expands the universe. The projecting into physical and having the physical experience of both wanted and unwanted things, that creates expansion of consciousness. That's why we're here. But here we are as humanity creating this whole list of things that we're never allowed to appreciate. Therefore, we're never allowed to solve them. And I'm talking about things in our lives and things, things across humanity. We demonize war, yet it keeps happening. We demonize starvation, it keeps happening. We demonize genocide, it keeps happening. We, we demonize uh, children being abused, it keeps happening. And the very thought of not demonizing it is so distasteful for so many in the matrix. Like, how in the hell can I do anything other than demon, demonize that? I understand that. But I also have seen, I've witnessed the amazing transformative power when you take your negative focus away from something and instead, and you can't ignore it, you know, ignoring it is is what we call a spiritual bypassing. You can't just pretend like it doesn't exist because it's going to show back up for you. That more benign appreciation. Appreciation is not celebration. Appreciation is, oh, isn't it wonderful that children are being abused? No, it's not that. It will never be that. It's deeper understanding. Why is this happening? Why does this keep happening? If it's a vibrational, uh, you know, if it's a vibrational manifestation as all things are, how in the world does the child place themselves in that path? And how in the world does the abuser place themselves in in, in that journey? How how does that happen? Going into the how and having deep understanding, deeper understanding of it has incredible healing power, incredible healing power. But we're not told to do that, right? We are taught in the matrix that we just have to continue demonizing and that's it. Well, that keeps it alive. So don't start out with the most horrific things that you can imagine in our world. You have to establish a practice 
and you have to get yourself there if you so choose. You can choose not to do any of this and you're still going to have an expansion of consciousness journey. So this practice is optional. There's no dogma and taya. But I will tell you that if you want to experience joy, clarity, and abundance, that's the path to it in this lifetime. A lot of people have found their way to financial prosperity, financial abundance, and realize that the joy and clarity aren't really there. This is why we have billionaires on social media complaining about everything all the time. They have all the stuff and they're still miserable. It's amazing, right? We're supposed to want all the stuff, but here the one that has all the stuff is still angry about everything all the time. Why is that? Because all of that money has not brought joy. Money doesn't bring joy necessarily. It can bring some temporary happiness and some great experiences for sure, but it's not the answer that we're told that it is in the matrix. Being told that money and material things is the answer is just the way to keep us on that matrix treadmill of performing for someone else. And the interesting thing is, is the people at the top, I, I like to use the pyramid as, as an analogy because really what I see, uh, all of these things exist in sort of a pyramid form where there's very few people operating at the apex, the people at the top that really understand the matrix and get it and understand what's going on and how, how society really functions. And then there's everyone else that's somewhere below that all the way down to the bottom of those who are really suffering in the matrix who support the weight of the apex and everything in between. So the folks at the top understand that the suffering experience of everyone beneath them is their own creation. And I know it sounds callous or even cruel if you've operated in the matrix for quite some time, but you can have appreciation for them without judging them. You can have appreciation for those having the suffering experience without judging them, just like you have appreciate can have appreciation for everything else without judging it. It is always possible. So instead of being triggered into a should not be vibration, the next time you find yourself there, first of all, step one, appreciate the trigger. Because your trigger is a sign to you of what's lurking in your vibrational basement, what transgressor energy is down there. Because if something has the ability to trigger you, that judgment is there all the time. It is running in the background of your mind. It is helping create every unwanted thing that you experience in your life. So instead of going down the, the, the spiral when you're triggered by something, notice that shift in emotion. Notice the should not be energy that is present when you're, when you're witnessing something and stop and say, why is this triggering me? And how do I heal this trigger? Because the more you heal your triggers, the more your default vibration goes higher and higher and higher and the better your personal life becomes. And as a strand of consciousness in the collective of humanity, your personal experience is contributing back to the collective experience. So the more of us that learn this and raise our default vibration, the more we are collectively raising the vibration of humanity. Now, I don't think that we're going to reach utopia anytime soon. I'm not looking for that. I don't need that. Uh, the stream has said that if we ever achieve utopia, that will truly be the end of our world. That's okay as well, though, because the energy that creates us is eternal. And that energy will simply move on to something else, to something more sophisticated, perhaps, that, that causes even more expansion of consciousness, which is always going to be achieved in the identifying things that are not our preference, moving through the experience and ultimately solving it at some point. And of course, I'm talking in terms of, of eternal energy, not very limited earthly linear time. Because we, we want to solve things in our lifetime. That's just our ego wanting to do that. And when you learn to recognize when you are operating in ego and when you are operating primarily as a source being, there is a stark contrast between those two. And you know where you are based on how you feel. So when you really get in touch with your emotions and your feelings and really start paying attention, am I feeling good? Am I experiencing joy right now? When you're experiencing joy, you could be living in the same house with the same bank account, the same body, the same job, and the same relationships, and just be joyful for the sake of being joyful. Little things light you up when you're in that joyful state. You don't need the handbag and the perfect body and all of the stuff that your television tells you that you need to have to be happy. You just are happy. Well, I'm just joyous right now for no reason. Why is that? I still have the same problems that I had yesterday, but today they're not bothering me. Today I'm fine with how I look. Today I'm fine with 
you know, whatever's going on in the world in my life. That's joy. That's what everyone's reaching for. That's what everyone who is on the treadmill of life is, is, is seeking. And you get these things that the matrix tells you that are versions of that. And they work for a little while. And then after a, after a bit, the contrast rolls in, which means there's positive and negative aspects to everything. So the negative aspects start to show up. And then sometimes we start judging that stuff as should not be. And we destroy it in the process. And that's okay. That's expansion of consciousness. But the more you understand the process, the more joy you're finding just in moving through the process. The clearer you are about it. Source is joy. Source is clarity. And source is the source of all abundance because it's the source of well-being. And we get to define well-being. If, you know, for some, well-being used to be just not being eaten by something else or not being attacked by someone else. For others, well-being means being at a five-star resort and being weighted on hand and foot all the time. We get to define that. Whatever your version of well-being is, source is not judging how you choose to experience it. Just don't expect the five-star resort to continually make you a joyous being without being a joyous being first. <clears throat> That's the trick. Maitland, it's good to see you on live. I know we don't get to see each other live very often. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments, you can type them in here. Even after the broadcast, I go back and answer things and interact. Uh, wherever you're watching this, I do get notified of your comments. Uh, I love to do that interaction. If you haven't uh, subscribed on TikTok, most of my content right now is happening on TikTok. So get on TikTok, uh, even if it's about to be banned in the United States, don't worry about that, uh, and follow the stream of David on TikTok because I'm doing a lot of uh, content over there right now. We have a lot of interaction and the community is really growing on TikTok more than anywhere else, unfortunately. Uh, but Facebook is what it is and YouTube is what it is. But for some reason, TikTok is really lit up around the stream's message. And uh, it's a really cool place to go and interact with other people that are that are really getting this or are challenged by it because we, because we get those both of those comments on there. So to wrap up, <clears throat> simply understanding that deep understanding is appreciation. And when we seek to appreciate, we are always going to find the light. We are always going to find source in that appreciation because that's what source is. Source creates all of it. So therefore, source appreciates all of it. Source understands that the things that here we are in this, this human created matrix of belief that create suffering for us are actually creating our expansion of consciousness. Therefore, there's appreciation in that. And the things that we deem horrific are all a learned response by us. And we don't have to be horrified by anything that's happening in our world. We can choose to be, that's, that's for sure. But just understand that when we are horrified by it and we are pushing against it, and thinking about it and labeling it as should not be with great emotion, we're fueling it. That's a hard pill to swallow in the matrix where they've taught us exactly the opposite. We've got a battle, we've got to fight, we've got to push against. Yet we see now that, wait a minute, all the stuff that we battle and judge and push against, we may stop one little instance of it, and then it's just going to pop up somewhere else. It continues to live on because we give it life. You suffocate it through appreciation, through deep understanding. Ah, I know why that's happening. I understand how these people feel and I understand how these people feel as well. I understand that they're having an experience and that experience is, is their vibrational match. And it's not for me to judge, it should not be. And I'm not in the experience. And you will notice that there, there are things that we have all experienced that when you tell someone else about it, they have a reaction of pity. And notice that that reaction of pity doesn't feel good for you. Notice that when they reacted, oh God, that's so terrible that you experienced that. That's just awful. <clears throat> and if you've done a little bit of this work, maybe you're not even feeling that way about it. And that that their uh, reaction is doesn't feel good to you because it's not your vibrational match. So, you know, no, don't pity me. I moved through that. It actually made me stronger. I, I survived that. And now I know what it's like to have experienced that. That's true for everyone. For everyone. And if you think about the most horrific things, I will wrap up by telling you that a good friend of mine was murdered two nights ago. And that is something that I have, I have never experienced that. I have never had somebody that I know uh, be killed. So, and this person wasn't something I was, someone I was terribly close to, but somebody that I really connected with when we were together. And I, I you know, only saw him every once in a while. But when I did, there was a, a connection. We talked about Taya, we did all of these things. And he met what most people would call a horrific end. 
And that's something that I have been processing for the last two days. And yesterday I was definitely <clears throat> in more of a state of shock around it. And certainly a little bit of judgment, not a lot of judgment, but a little bit of judgment, understanding how he created this. I kind of already know that. And now today, such clarity just, just reigned over me that this was just part of his journey. He has returned to his completed state now and that the forthcoming, uh, you know, the, the forthcoming mindset and clarity around all of that is going to contribute to the expansion of consciousness for everyone involved. So I wanted to save that to the end because that's it's kind of a big thing that's going on for me right now. But I always like to share what's going on because people are very often challenged by these concepts when they first hear them. But they are such incredibly, incredibly transformative practices to learn to operate as a source being because we are source beings. We're simply moving out of that human created matrix of beliefs where we are very limited, where we have to obey all the rules. We have to think the way somebody else teaches us to think and that we have to fear and judge everything. And the fear and judgment cycle is what keeps all of this stuff that we don't want alive. And thinking that we have to solve it for all of humanity, that's our ego. Source is loving all of it. Source is loving the experience that we come here and have in a very temporary way as an expression of itself. Source loves that. We are the ones that judge it. And when you learn not to judge it and learn instead to seek appreciation of it, meaning deep understanding of it, everything really starts to transform. You really start to see clearly and you start to experience authentic joy without needing anything external to change. So if you're interested in these teachings, that's what all of this is about. That is the root of Taya. And of course, I have the podcast, the Stream of David podcast. I have the Taya practice book on Amazon. I have lots of tools for you to dive in deeper and really learn this practice. Make it your new way of life if you choose to. It's not for everyone. But for those that have done enough work to get to this point to where they're really ready for the, the leading edge of thought for humanity and wanting to contribute that back to humanity, you know that is your ego, but there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with wanting to help people. I, that's why I do this. So if that's where you are, this is a good practice for you. If you want to stay rooted in fear and judgment, and a lot of people do, Fear and judgment sells very well. I could be preaching fear and judgment over on TikTok and have a lot more followers than I do. It, it sells. It works really, really well. I understand it. And I don't judge those that do that because they, they do understand though. They know when they get on there and they're constantly complaining about something and they're picking a side and they're helping divide the matrix in half. We're on this side. They're on that side. We're right. They're wrong. Doesn't it feel good to listen to me echo back all of your personal prejudices to you? That sells very well. That's the matrix right there in a nutshell. And the ones at the top that are pulling all the strings are not evil. They just understand it. So here's the thing. We can be at the top at the apex of that pyramid as well, living in joy, clarity, and abundance without needing to push fear and judgment, without needing to divide and promote hatred and all of these things. We are all about love and light in the form of appreciation, meaning deep understanding. That's what the practice is all about. So thank you all for listening. Thank you for, uh, absorbing uh, the, the uh, personal uh, experience that I'm going through right now. And I am going to do a podcast today where we're going to go a lot deeper into it. It'll be out in a few weeks, uh, but the podcast with David Rude, I'm going to dive into this and I'm going to channel the stream uh, and we'll hear what they have to say about it. Thank you all so much for watching.